Welcome, folks, to a special episode of Andre Rotz's Brain. We're taking it literal this time. I took mushrooms. I watched Amadeus. It was fantastic. I tried for the colors, but I added color. Ooh, see what I did there? I messed up the audio interviewing my friend Marcus Shakes. So another friend of mine is working on that to fix it. I got a really special one for you. Here we go. Okay, so backstory of this episode is that I took a bunch of mushrooms a couple hours ago and <laughs> had a really long conversation with myself and then started having the same conversation with myself over again and was like, okay, well, I guess <laughs> I have to take the <laughs> needle off the record player. And then I tried to sit down and watch this movie. And then I actually had some introspective thoughts. I was like, oh, of course, right? Yeah, who am I to think the trip is over when I think it's over? <laughs> so we'll give it another shot now this time. So I'm watching Amadeus. It's a movie I've loved since my childhood because it's a fond memory of me getting my fingernail ripped off. <laughs> uh, but it was... Is this wonderful moment of the support where my mom's boyfriend, my mom, and I were all just in a bed watching this movie together. I like how they have this, like, gay... In, they, they're they insinuating that this is a, a, some gay assistance, like an Abbott and Costello. Little... <laughs> really, signore? You don't know what you're missing. Oh, what is that? The All sound right, of suicide? Signore, if you don't open this door, we're going to eat everything and we're going to leave nothing for you. Oh, what a threat. And I'm never going to come and see you again. It probably, I mean, they, they probably were banging the shit out of them, so that was probably, like, why they were there late at night, scheduled with their candles. I'm sure the candles weren't just candles. They can be relit. Do you hear that? The sound of a body falling a piano. That's the sound of suicide. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's got his throat slit open. Let's show this to a seven-year-old. <laughs> oh, this is great. It's a good thing I was probably already suicidal. <laughs> This is <laughs> it literally hadn't dawned on me. I mean, it's a great movie. I loved classical music and I loved Mozart. That's probably why they were showing me and they had no way of knowing <laughs> that the opening scene of this movie is going to be a guy slitting his throat. They didn't have Google back then. <laughs> I guess they could have asked a couple people, probably the same people that recommended the movie. <laughs> I do love, this is a great movie to watch on Mushrooms, by the way, just because the, the, it's, the way these Victorian people dress is so ridiculous and flowery, it's like it's absurd and senseless, but it's, that's why it's great for Mushrooms. <laughs> it's, I wonder, maybe they were just all, maybe that's why they called it the Enlightenment. They were just all on Mushrooms the whole time, and what they found in their hearts when they discovered their pure selves with this, that they're evil. <laughs> they make great music, though. The tremendous music uh, comes out of perfection. It's weird. Eugenics and Beethoven. <laughs> and I guess Mozart. I mean, we are watching his movie. The great thing is, is that really no one said anything, so I could keep talking forever. It, it picks up in a bit. I, I, fucking, I wonder if I'm going to be able to tolerate the annoying laugh um, on Mushrooms. That'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, the guy who played this also starred in Animal House. Probably thought he was going <laughs> to have a giant career where his first two movies are two of the biggest hits of two decades, and then nothing happens ever to you, ever after again in your career. I mean, uh, that sounds like voluntary, or you got blackballed or diddled some producer's kid or something. 
Oh, man. Dude, I thought the insane asylum was bad here. In, the state ward was bad here in Chicago now in 2020 or 2019. I can't imagine 300 years ago. I can't imagine three years ago how antiquated it was, much less three. I'm surprised any of these people are alive and they're not just actively just chopping off things for the fun of it. Like, let's see if chopping off a finger of a deaf person has any different reaction of chopping off a finger of a non-deaf person. It's like, well, he does scream probably louder because <laughs> even a not-deaf person is trying to be a little respectful. Deaf guy doesn't know how loud he's being. When you're chopping off his. This is great. It's nice that even in the crazy ward, they gave him his own private room with a piano. That's real money. It's when they throw you in. <laughs> that, it's kind of a really stupid movie set then for this because it's like, would you really be in a state asylum? Oh, I guess he's probably just in a wing of the state asylum. I see. He's not been given his own quarters. Leave me alone. This is one of my favorite movies. I should know this detail. <laughs> I, leave alone I never thought that uh, the F. Scott, whatever, Philip Murray Abraham, I, I never thought he did a great job in makeup. As an old guy, even as a kid, I think I. No, actually, as a kid, I was really surprised. Oh, that's really ghastly. He looks fucking scary as shit on mushrooms now. Okay, they did a good job. Never mind, I'll take that back. He looks like death. Also, like Peter O'Toole. <laughs> Peter O'Toole for like the last. 30 years of his roles. I, I studied it in my research. Actively looks like death. Where? Here in Vienna. No one cares about this dialogue, so I'll talk over that too. It's really just exposition to set up the backdrop of this. I don't know why they didn't go straight from the suicide into the past. Like you don't need more setup. We. Oh, you know what it is? These are movie scenes that exist before Google. <laughs> Because you don't need that. Now you can just go straight into it because people would know enough. <laughs> That's funny. Google has, has ruined how movies are made. Or made them better. Because who we don't need all these scenes here. Fucking. There we go. Now we're back into the past. I like. This is my happy. Not my happy spot. It's just mushroom spot. Plus, by the way, being a conductor would be the most fun. Because we all do it in our free time anyways. We're just That's what we're doing in the kitchen. And when we're pooping and brushing our... Like, we're, everyone's being a conductor in every moment of their lives that they're not doing their profession. <laughs> How do conductors have a job? <laughs> There's nine billion people accidentally doing your job. That'd be cool if you put up a camera in your kitchen and you just broadcast it out to an orchestra and just th that was game. <laughs> they were down to play, uh, down to fu down to clown, and they were like, "All right, we'll follow this person's." Has never been trained instructions. I don't know if I'm running out of gas or the mushroom powder that I had in a cup of water that I thought was water. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yes, I know that. Oh, that's the yeah, song. that was. Sorry, I didn't know you wrote that. You wrote that? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Well, then why'd you play it? You set me. This whole thing was just a setup to make me feel bad for not knowing who you are. Be more famous then, dude. Come on. <laughs> if you don't have the talent, then do it through marketing. I guess they didn't have the ability to back then because it was just through nobility. He didn't have marketing. He just had poisoning people. <laughs> Which is 
I guess the Russians have just stuck to that because they're like, you know what? Bad PR is good PR anyway. <laughs> It'd be funny if there's stock in Russia. They're like, it's fine. Fuck it. Bad PR is good PR. <laughs> oh my God. I think I just so solved the world. I think there's literal, there's got to be, what if there's another stock market and people are just like betting on countries just as a whole? <laughs> they're like, America. They're like Russia, Russia can you? Russia doesn't matter. No matter what they do, their stock goes up. Bad VR, or they no, they just know they're bad. No one's investing. Russia is like the GameStop or Bitcoin or something. You're just throwing your money to watch it burn. Yeah, it's not Russia. Russia's fine. I don't know why I went on that tangent. I, they've just been subjugated to very harsh dictatorships. I forgot I was watching this movie for a second. <laughs> I guess because fucking F. Murray Abraham is still talking. Who cares? Do you want to be a trained monkey? Would you like me to drag you around Europe doing I like how the movie is called Amadeus, but the first 20 minutes are all about Salieri. Fuck you, Salieri. Get out of the way, dude. No one wanted to listen to you. That's why the movie is called Amadeus to begin with. Why did you make the begin? Why did you make this movie about Salieri when it's called Mozart? Fuck Salieri. He wasn't good enough. God, that's got to be frustrating. You dedicate your whole life to just end up still the star of a movie, I guess, without having any talent. That's amazing. Salieri, still the star of a movie without being the most talented person. <laughs> Wouldn't have got there without mushrooms. Maybe I would have. I don't know. My brain's a very silly place. Make me famous through the world. Yeah, he was probably staring at Jesus' six-pack, I think. Let speak my name I think uh, love for what I this love. movie intimates that Salieri was, I think, gay, but I don't know if he was in real life. I could Google it, but I feel like that would be too distracting on the mushrooms. A bright light <laughs> could do many things right now. Could end up having that conversation that I've already had today. <laughs> Uh, fuck it. I'll just leave it running. You guys get the rest of my revelations as they come. And we'll try to stay on track with the movie. <laughs> That's not a good start. <laughs> Is Salieri's dad dying? <laughs> that is... Oh my god, that's so perfect timing. <laughs> as soon as I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll try to be somewhat engaged with the movie. The fucking guy is choking to death. <laughs> oh my god. And it's still about Salieri. This movie is still about Salieri and it's called fucking Mozart. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's so bothersome right now. <laughs> It's, uh, I guess you, maybe you do it just because it is like a rock star or like a wrestler building a setup. You gotta, even with the movie, you're building a tension, but you know, fuck it. <laughs> that's what the, uh, that's what the previews of the other movies were for, because this is back in the movie theater days when you got previews. This is, wasn't Netflix unless they're geniuses. You don't have to set anything up. It's done for you. And Why? I <laughs> Is this still about Salieri? I kept my hands clean. <laughs> Worked hours every day teaching students. Many I think I just can't handle aging. I think I just don't like looking at the old. He's gross. <laughs> work and work Why didn't and they work just get Peter O'Toole for this? <laughs> I don't know why they age any actors when there are so many just old, beat-up actors. <laughs> it's like, you could throw a guy. He's got a sad card already from doing some movie with Humphrey Bogart or something. Just throw him a bone. Uh, you don't even have to clean him up. He's playing a guy that's suicidal. 
<laughs> you probably just take them off the street, throw them a hundred bucks, put them in this 17th century wheelchair or whatever, 19th century? I forget my taste of Mozart. It's mostly because I forget my childhood. I don't think if I could remember my childhood, all the facts of Mozart would come back. <laughs> oh, that's an incredible thought. I just have all this unlocked like knowledge that if I could just solve all this trauma that I'd, I'd be a child prodigy again. But at 36, <laughs> again, the movie is still about Salieri. <laughs> we are 15 minutes into this movie. <laughs> this fucking... I wonder if that was part of the deal. F. Murray Abraham was just a bigger star at the time or something. Or maybe they're trying to push him as a star. I don't know. This is all so stupid. <laughs> Everyone's very blue. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot Mozart was a man. How could I forget? No, he was a rock star, dude. Come on. He's probably swinging. He's like Freddie Mercury. He had little midgets on trays. Little people, I guess. Sorry, it's not go okay to say that word. No, the thing is, I actually will defer to whatever social media is saying because... Oh, no, you know what? I do know a little person. What am I talking about? I've never talked to him about what... About that issue, though. Which is, I guess, probably better, in a way. Because we're just always relating as people. Or, hopefully. Maybe, hopefully, I'm not just constantly offending him. <laughs> and he's just going... I'm probably constantly offended as soon as I said that. I... As soon as I'm done with this mushroom trip, <laughs> I need to send him a message. I should maybe do it now. I feel like that's too distracting. Okay. We're finally going to meet Mozart? Nope. Still about Salieri. <laughs> He's eating an olive or something, trying to portray that he is. He's allowing himself to be not as perfect as he seems. Damn, she's got big tits. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, I, I feel really bad for women, but I totally understand <laughs> why they forced you into that shit. You could have probably not said no. No, you definitely couldn't have said no. You would have gotten killed. Yes. No, I'm sure. That's the thing. I think that's a myth. I feel like women on the whole weren't respected. <laughs> Every once in a while, there was probably an individual woman that a guy cared about. It just wasn't the majority yet. <laughs> they were probably I'm treated like witches. Here. Feminists. <laughs> like a guy who went down on his wife <laughs> was probably burned at the stake. <laughs> <laughs> oh god a that's silly b that's probably i want to google that it's probably true we finally get mozart <laughs> we're going back no yes yes no listen you don't know where you are here and of course we're going to obviously then also portray him in the worst light and dance backwards and sing he probably was just a terribly spoiled i mean the dude was a famous composer when he was four can you imagine it's like justin bieber <laughs> But at four, you're riding a horse, having it, ordering your horse to kick people in the face, probably. <laughs> like, hold that child there, and then he pats the horse on the haunch and just smash. <laughs> Mozart, Mozart had horse punched people for joy. That's gonna be my new, the new. I'm going to Wikipedia entry that... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can't even think if anyone's listening. This, or who cares? We're doing this. <laughs> oh, that's your proposal? I... <laughs> I think this movie ruined proposals for me. Because I, I thought, I was like, oh yeah, a good proposal is made flippantly. Who wants all that set-up bullshit? It's all fake. And pretend and shit. You want the real stuff when you feel it. Like, just when I feel I love you, I say it. I want to spend the rest of my life with you when I feel it. It just takes maybe 
now seven to ten years to feel it. Because I once felt it after one year. And then she married a guy on my rugby team. <laughs> so, I guess patience? Now we're back to Salieri. I mean, I guess I've made this movie more about me, but I guess uh, I'm really just filling the time until we get to Mozart. Whores and booze. <laughs> It is so insane that, you know what though, but history's probably fake. He probably had ghost writers and shit. He had, there's no way Mozart wrote his own shit. I think that was just a show parent who hired, that's maybe that's why this movie's about Salieri. Maybe Salieri <laughs> gave all his good shit to Mozart. <laughs> Uh, but that's, yeah, there's, there's no way Mozart was writing full concertos or symphonies at four. I can't believe that that's brilliant. It was just a parent. Like, a comic for uh, the Oscars or a roast show or maybe their own hour special and just hires a panel. That giggling, dirty-minded creature, I guess. God. The floor. Well, I think that went off remarkably well, don't you? Indeed. These Viennese certainly know good music. Either this movie is great or it did a terrible disservice <laughs> to Mozart. Who knows? All this fucking history is fake anyways. Oh yeah, here's the the guy who later in real life got convicted of a pedophilia. I think he's out now. The more license I allow you, the more you take. Oh no, not yet. I preached on that. I preach a lot. Actually, I don't, because a I don't fuck, and then when I do, I rarely come. Your father is waiting for you there, patiently. It's pros and cons of circumcision, right? It's like it's great early on in your twenties. It's like this brilliant middle point, and but then yeah, after your thirties, it's just all leathery and callous, like the bottom of a cowboy boot. <laughs> you can light a match on it. <laughs> uh, that is, it's trippy for him and me. Just a room full of children clapping. <laughs> I guess when it's forced laughter, though, too, right? Like, a room full of children is great, but a room full of children that are forced to be there and forced to be happy is very sad. <laughs> yeah, why is that? Forced smiling is always the saddest thing. Again, now we're going back into more Salieri. Hey everybody, sorry to interrupt the amazing show that I prepared for you on drugs. This isn't about likes or shares. This is about the show Brain Drain, a comedy debate show that I'm doing live at the Lincoln Lodge in Chicago every Thursday at 10 p.m. We got 50 seats available. Tickets are going. I sold three whole tickets already, expecting a, a gaggle of that to come probably in the last 24 hours just to stress me out. Get them while you can. Now, more babbling about this movie. Thanks for listening to Andre Rotz's Brain. Essentially, Sally Air, you just became your blowhard old uncle who loves classical music who's going to talk your ear off about it when you were into Green Day. You know what? I used to love classical music when I was a kid, and guess what? I'm going to love it again when I'm an adult. I used to have a radio station set to classical music <laughs> when I was in college. 101.1. It was sort of by accident, because in Houston it was a hard rock station, and when I went up to Dallas it was classical music, and I was like, yeah, I love classical music, so I'll just keep it. They called it Taming the Beast. <laughs> Because I, uh, I would listen to it literally. I was better when I was young. I would listen to it to calm myself down. Yeah, I was better. I was more in tune. 
now I keep thinking I can just power through it. When I was younger, I was like, no, I have to listen to myself. Isn't that funny? There's anything this movie has taught us is that uh, with age, we start forgetting the lessons that we've learned rather than actually learning the lessons that we've learned. Yeah, I'm completely off track with this movie. It doesn't matter because it's still about Salieri. <laughs> No, it's, it's, I guess, Mozart is so brilliant. He's just popping out. Here's pedophile again. I wonder if he eats an orange like a pedophile. I wonder if you can tell in certain things. <laughs> he does kind of pick his glass up like a pedophile, but is that the character? Because he is playing... An old Austrian prince, an Aust old Austrian prince, probably a pedophile. So maybe that's that's the thing I've actually realized. When all these things come out about actors after the fact, how close they are to the roles that they played. I'm like you guys aren't even acting. And anytime you see someone hired to play a pedophile, just arrest that actor. <laughs> like, if anything. They're probably grooming him. <laughs> Look, they're in Hollywood. Everyone's part of the ring. We got so many rings, like in this dude's wig. Boo. <laughs> Just the fact that we did that. The, or, like, not we, because, like, I'm not a part of any of that. I guess. I think some of my family was actually. The. the German side that moved to South America or the Spanish side, one of them had money somewhere, I think. That's how you have a second family, right, to begin with? <laughs> That's how you can move internationally also is uh, you either, well, no, you can do it without money, but I think they did it with, you either do it with no money or with tons of money. There's no in-between. There's no middle-class people hopping continents. <laughs> it's an all-or-nothing thing. <laughs> Ooh, mushrooms. Kicking. A little, okay, it's just a little weirdness. So much color. The costumes in this, it's weird. I expected them to be more colorful, but it is funny that within the color, you can see how bland the availability, I guess, of, or maybe it's just our interpretation of it now, because... Although we have the things still, it's not the Library of Alexandria, it's not like all these clothes are burned. Again, this movie is still about Salieri. We are 27 minutes in though, and it has felt like three hours. <laughs> it's about Salieri and Jesus. 27 minutes in to a movie about Mozart, and it's about Salieri and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and pedophiles. It's about Salieri, Jesus, and pedophiles. <laughs> this is going to be a long watch. I couldn't just enjoy this childhood experience of mine, memory, where I got a fingernail ripped off. <laughs> this is one of my fondest childhood memories, is having a fingernail ripped off. Again, I keep forgetting. <laughs> There's that laugh. That's a nightmare. <laughs> oh. All right, hold on. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> just like comedy. What do you have for me today? Which is fine. That's every audience. Even though they've never seen you before. <laughs> Not going to make it about me. What a charming idea. I mean, I guess I could keep making it about me because it's still about Salieri. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, I think this is the scene where he was inspired by God to write a piece. But then uh, Mozart made fun of it or something. And it's kind of funny because when I started learning how to play piano, I 
specifically remembered doing trying to learn this piece to like myself show up Salieri. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, no, he's still a professional like <laughs> piano player. It took me like six months to try to <laughs> this six second part in a movie. But I'm just such a nightmare person. I was like, nope, I'm gonna spend six months on figuring out this <laughs> Okay. Hey, look, Mozart's made it back into the movie. The movie's about him again for a second. <laughs> the movie with his name on it is about him for a second. God, those emperor, those fucking princes and shit were probably so inept. Teaching them how to play piano, you gotta teach them how to wipe their ass first. Like, they were, that's... <laughs> That's probably very many levels above. Although, no, you're probably, if anything, better trained to play piano than you are to handle normal things. I think Salieri just has too much invested in his work. <laughs> I guess you kind of have to if you're a composer, but I think he takes it too seriously, frankly. <laughs> This is kind of a note for me to not be Salieri in my own movie. I guess as long as we're not talking about Mozart still. <laughs> yeah, don't take yourself too seriously, because you're never as good as you think you are. There's always a guy that can just fuck off and do better. <laughs> but the thing is, you're not that guy. You still have to work and be prepared and shit. Or also, and, but also fuck off a little bit. There's a little bit of fun in everything. That's the balance. We are fully back in that stupid conversation again with mushrooms. Take the needle off the record. I wonder. <laughs> I'm reserving the holy red. Aww. Don't have to talk constantly, Andre. As he got off to school, he slipped and fell. My own sister, Antoinette, helped him up, and you know what he did? He jumped into her arms and said, Will you marry me? Yes or no? <laughs> it is funny, because uh, the whole time that goes on screen, I'm like, that pedophile is talking. <laughs> it's just saying words, and I'm like, pedophile, pedophile, pedophile's talking. <laughs> it's so weird. It's perfectly be befitting that Eddie Barzoon character in... Uh, the Devil's Advocate, another one of my stupidly favorite movies. Al Pacino's birthday is today. Doesn't matter because this won't be released on that day, today, of the day of his birthday. Shut up. I know you work well, Signore. You know, I actually composed some variations on a melody of yours. Mio caro Adonio. Mm. A funny little tune, but it yielded some good things. The most insulting thing. I was inspired by your thing to write something much better. <laughs> that's what... Oh, man. I, that's like some weird shade, too. And Like, you know, I was inspired by this person's tune. Lady Gaga. She's paying it for it, I'm sure. I don't think it was really decided, but I think German please let it be German. Again, I watched this movie for colors and Mozart. <laughs> no colors. Very little Mozart. <laughs> I don't think you have, Herr Director. Not yet. I mean it's quite Hold on. New. This I'll might solve it. Show it to you immediately, of course. Pedophile, 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 pedophile. <laughs> Every time he's on screen, I think I'm just going to take a hit again because I'm not going to be able to say anything except for pedophile. Yes, where? In a harem, Majesty. In a seraglio. You mean in Turkey? Yes, exactly. 
don't know why especially, but it happens in Germany. What? It doesn't especially. It could be in Turkish if you really want. <laughs> no, my dear fellow, the, the language is not my major point. Do you really think that subject is quite appropriate for a national theater? Why not? It's charming. It's the National I mean, Theater. I, I won't actually show concubines exposing their... their... <laughs> it's not indecent. People it's highly moral, Majesty. It, it haven't heard of whorehouses, just Excuse me. mistresses. What do you think these could be? Well, being a foreigner, I would love to know. Well, well. tell him, Mozart. Name us a German virtue. German virtues. Being very rigid about rules. We know nothing about love. I like how how this is like the battle of courts, the Italians and the Aust Italian opera. All those male sopranos screeching, stupid fat couples rolling their eyes about that's not love. It's 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 just rubbish. <laughs> Majesty. I mean, he's right. <laughs> That Diane Aubrey is bullshit. Love is bullshit, <laughs> I guess, is the problem. <laughs> it's not that the opera is bullshit. <laughs> it's that love is garbage. <laughs> it's such a weird place to get to on mushrooms, but... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's why opera sucks. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, I get it. You're in love, but... Fucking ugh. <laughs> the rest is just the same, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the rest is just the same. And you just copied that. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be, because there's, there's a little bit of grace to... No, this is better. <laughs> and that's playful, too. I love Mozart. I think when I was a kid, I would laugh like that, too, imitating this dude. <laughs> I think I do that now, actually. <laughs> I do do that now. Oh, that's ridiculous. God damn it. It is crazy that, like, <laughs> people work so hard at that, and... I can get stabbed. <laughs> and we'll still get a an applause break. <laughs> the same applause break. They work so much harder at learning a piece of classical music than I did at getting stabbed. I guess I have worked my whole life at being an asshole. So I have it down. <laughs> Just as long as they have their... Juilliard School for Piano, and I have my aunt life PhD to be an asshole. Jesus. Again, it's about Salieri again, so I can make it about me. <laughs> Movie's still about Salieri. Oh. <sighs> this is the color I needed. He looks like a candy thing. Fast and yet. And he's been commissioned to write an opera. 
to the church? Yeah. Is there a part of your family? I like how corsets are really Hi. just a thing. For chicks with small tits to look like they have big tits, just accept that you have small tits. Small tits are great. I love small tits. Small tits means they won't sag and you won't have weird nipples, probably. And also, small tits normally come on a relatively toned body. There aren't small tits on big women. <laughs> have a very efficient sort of preference. Ankle space. <laughs> My grandfather ruined me. <laughs> yeah, at least he had a father figure. Well, he was a terrible father figure. <laughs> God, that's a just to be able to sing like that is so crazy, much less effortlessly. <sighs> yeah, see, not all opera is bad. You just gotta cut all that love bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, she wants to fuck Justin Bieber instead of whatever One Direction or something. I don't know. I think they were pretty famous, too, though. I don't know my pop culture. I should, because they make so much money. I would, like, <laughs> one day of theirs would fund my life. Look at all the wigs. I wanted color, and it's all gray. <laughs> I mean, Yeah. And then she's colorful because she's blonde. If you if you tone down everything, of course blondes look like they stand out. It's the only way blondes stand out in a German movie is to do it in a <laughs> opera house with the lights turned down. I guess it is kind of hard to have a really racially integrated set set <laughs> movie set in Australia and. <laughs> Victorian, that would be funny. I guess that's why you gotta have Hamilton. It's like, yeah, we have to make, we have to make Amadeus with black people. First of all, to make it about Amadeus, because <laughs> it's still about Salieri. He's on screen again. This is this whole. <laughs> it's so funny. There's my color. Yeah, I guess we didn't get racial color, but we did get colored, co like colorful costumes. So there's that. <laughs> I almost said colored costumes. That <laughs> that is oh, a whole different type of cancelable. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll leave it. Um, <laughs> what is he? What? would even that be? <laughs> it would be just like a racist person's depiction of what a black person was. <laughs> Which is... And then what? <laughs> and then they're just standing on stage like, what do you, you ask us here? We are also actors. We could get into costume. And they're like, no, no, no. This is... And they're like, no. This is... I'm an actor. They're like, no, no, no. I thought we... They're like, no, you can take it off now. Where just like the directors, even back in the 20s, thought that everyone, there were no black people. They were just, everyone that was black was just in blackface. Jesus, what am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Leave it to a narcissist to talk over any of the good music. No wonder I like blonde chicks with big tits. I saw this movie when I was seven, and first of all, 
I don't actually like blonde chicks with big tits. I like brunettes with small tits, which is a very weird thing because it's very common. It is <laughs> and none of them it is, isn't it? are the ones yes, I want. So, so then you like it, you, you really like it. <laughs> Leaving oh, that. Very good. <laughs> of course, now and then. Just, just, just now and then. It, it Pedophile, 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 pedophile. I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to smoke during his <laughs> speaking parts. <laughs> I'm just going to start naming all the other movies. Let Ferris Bueller's Day Off, pedophile, pedophile. The whole time, and he's like going chasing. He's got kind of like an unhealthy obsession with Ferris's sister, too. That's okay. I officially think we need to start arresting actors that played pedophiles. Or like had. <laughs> <laughs> if you can tap into it, I don't trust you. Again, broken record on mushrooms. I think I'm right in saying that, aren't I, court composer? Yes, yes. On the whole, yes, Majesty. This is absurd. My dear young man, don't take it too hard. Your work is ingenious. It's quality work. And there are simply too many notes. That's all. Just cut a few, and it'll be perfect. Which few did you have in mind, Majesty? That's my favorite scene. Too many notes. That's She's my landlady. That's fucking everything. I don't like it. If you could give it back to me with too many, with less notes. Oh, Constanza. How many women were called Constanza that didn't know they came from this movie? Probably, because... Oh probably just saw a scene they didn't realize like it was a pitiful character just this woman's only hope is to marry off her daughter because she's just so afraid of dying poor because she made all these bad decisions with her life she's got a haven't exactly received my father's consent yet not not entirely not altogether Excuse me, but um I like how Mozart's playing the field. Twenty six. Well, my advice is for you to marry this charming young lady and stay with us in Vienna. You see? You see? I told you that you might God, everyone's I guess she's like a shrew. She's such wonderful, such It's weird that people do exist in real life like this woman. Like I know. I have Three or four people that look exactly like her and that act very similarly, much less just act well, there it is. or look similarly. Oh no. She found out she's cheating on him, and you gotta probably care about your girlfriend's mom, dude. <laughs> There you go. A little late. That's <laughs> Here you go, Mom. And just splash some cold water in your face. Hey, could you could know? you please show some love and care? The marriage. What does it matter to you? Nothing. You marry who he pleases. I don't give a damn. I like how she talks like a 20s movie oh, star. Even though it's... 1780s Austria. <laughs> Extremely perfect. Everyone just thinks fucking being British is the being. I guess. I guess it is. Being British is because that they set the fucking language by the king. So I'm wrong. <laughs> Dear Mozart, my my sincere congratulations. If you like it, then. How could I not? <laughs> it really is the best music one can hear in Vienna today. Don't you agree? She must be dazzling in bed. I 
assume she's a virtuoso in that department. There can't be any other reason why you'd marry someone like that. Come in. Excuse me. Wolfie, Mama's not feeling very well. Can we go home now? Of course. No, 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 no. As we used to say when I was a kid, busted. <laughs> Yeah, that's where like yeah, that's where they need to. You need to as a creature, my darling girl, boy, maybe not be raised by certain single women, because <laughs> uh, incomprehensible. What was God up to? I have a joke for it, Andre. <laughs> Follow up with a joke. The mushrooms. Either forgive me in the face of every offense. Oh, poop. I think that's it. I think I clicked out. <laughs> but why? Still more Salieri, though. Why choose Mozart to teach me lessons in humility? Yep, I'm officially out. <laughs> I think I'm out of the mushrooms. Well, it is funny. Whenever I think I'm out, it does pull me right back in. So who the fuck knows? You might stand up to pee and talk to a demon. Violent thoughts. Every day. Sometimes for hours I would pray. So I know I don't have COVID. Is that my water tastes like mushrooms? I won't have him back. But your grace, I Your assure. son is an unprincipled, spoiled, conceited brat. Yes, sir, that's correct. That is the truth. But don't blame him. It's a fault of mine. In part, it was to indulge him for him. Please, your grace, give me one more chance. You have leave to try. Oh, God bless your grace. I thank your grace. I thank you. I write to you with urgent news. I am coming to Vienna. Take no further steps towards marriage until we meet. As you honor the father who has devoted his entire life to yours, do as I bid and await my coming. Await my coming. Await your father's coming. <laughs> yeah, that's poorly worded. But I'm also a hack comic. I'm back in. I'm not in on a mushroom trip, but I'm back in on this movie for a little bit because it's got colors, so maybe I'm still on a mushroom trip. <laughs> oh, I got married. Because she actually had the bigger tits in the movie. <laughs> Beloved father, remember how you've always told me Vienna is the city of musicians? To conquer here is to conquer Europe? With my wife, I can do it. And one day soon, when I'm a wealthy... Oh no, he has a supportive wife who lets him every once in a while step out. <laughs> how horrible. The guy literally has the dream and his dad is mad, in, at least in the movie. I feel like a, I feel like a real dad. Give you a pat on the back. Gracias, damas y caballeros. Uh, thank you for listening to Andrea Rossi's Brain. Uh, please, tell your friends. It's on Spotify. Tell your loved ones. It's on iTunes. Give us a like and a follow. We will love you forever.